Hey there everyone, we are going to do IW9, which is the boss stage of this event. IW9 has a new big dragon-like boss, which is called Sui Xiang. Um, he has a very high amount of HP, a pretty high attack as well, but his defense and rest are kinda low at B and B for each of them. Now he reduces damage taken from above and below. From my understanding of this particular skill, I think it's supposed to say that for the top two rows and the bottom two rows, he reduces the damage taken from those positions. So only the middle row is the best place to inflict damage against him. When defeated during its stage 1 and or 2 form, after a period of time, the unit takes its next form and reappears a certain distance to the right. So he's going to shift like one row forward each time he's being destroyed. Far away Mountain Thunderclap, which I believe it's like um, his ability that is, so deals continuous arts damage to units within cross areas around 3 range units. So his target priority first is range units. Range units being operators that... Okay, to explain what range is, let me just click on this. And then you, let's say, pick a particular operator. To know if an operator is range, you just look over here. If it says range, that's a range unit. Um, Things like your uh, lords, they're not considered range units because as you see over here, it says melee. So he's going to prioritize range units first and if there's not enough range units then he'll start to prioritize the last deployed melee unit. So if let's say you want to put medics into the map, um, they're going to hurt a lot because your medics will be under fire if there's only like um, three range units and then maybe say one or two of them are medics. All right? Heaven's Fall um, deals physical damage twice to melee units and additionally inflicts continuous arts damage um, that slowly increases over time. Um, I'm not very certain as to what this one is particularly. Um, I'm going to assume this is the one where he periodically throws down like a sword and that's like double the damage, kind of like a Patriot Spear. Um, but instead of Patriot Spear being hurting um, on the range units, this time it hurts melee units. And um, it will deal continuous arts damage as well, so pretty darn painful. Omnidirectional Breath is something that only happens in the last uh, phase of the boss. This boss has three phases. So it deals continuous arts damage. Um, I think it's arts damage or either that or it's true damage. Um, and it's a straight line. So everybody gets jabbed by his skill. And if you don't resist his skill, he will burn off all the deployable tiles for you to use. So not good stuff. Um, operators in the left side of the target area can reduce damage taken by allied units to the right and mitigate damage to the tiles. So Basically what they're saying is that if let's say you have an operator right in the, the left side of the map, everybody else standing behind the operator will take less damage from this like laser beam. So that's all the skills that you need to understand. Um, for all the other enemies here, most of them are weak to physical damage. As you see these two is like D defense and this guy is a bit different. This guy is weak to arts damage. And then there's of course all these small items as well. If you learn from my IW6, 7 and 8 guide, the best person to deal with them is going to be an Ethan. Same for this thing as well. Um, this is the first time we see the Wits, but the Wits only take 10 times to defeat. Again, a simple Ethan is able to kill it. Alright, that's all that you need to know. Um, just to note as well, uh, for the Wits, if let's say you let any of them go and it enters like um, the Dragon's range, it will give it additional HP. So pretty painful stuff. Alright. This is a squad that we'll be using. Um, it says IW8 there, I didn't change to IW9, but I hope you guys don't mind. Um, the main star of the show is going to be a Surter, skill 3 and 3. I highly recommend that the Surter is at least level 60. If you don't have that, please borrow from a friend, and remember it must be a mastery 3 Surter. Then use an Ethan. Doesn't need to be Elite 1, please take note of that. Just an Elite 0 level 1 on skill rank 4. That is all you need on your Ethan. It just so happens that my Ethan is already built to this level, so that's why it's like that. Um, bring along two medics, so single target medics will do. Uh, an example is going to be like a 3 star medic and a 4 star medic. If you have 6 star medics or 5 star medics that are even stronger than them, go ahead and use them to replace these two. Um, bring along a centurion, as mentioned a lot of the opera sorry, a lot of the enemies here are weak to physical damage, so Popuka is going to be a great one to deal with them. And then bring a fast free deploy. Doesn't need to be Gravel, but Gravel will be nice. So if let's say you use Gravel, make sure she's Elite 1, level 60, because she's going to be used to resist the laser beam, since she gains additional HP on her skill 2. 
make sure it's skill to rank 7 as well. Alright, that's all that you guys need to know. Only 6 operators. If you feel like you need more people in your squad, go ahead and take them. Alright, let's play the stage. IW9. Now start off by placing your Ethan. So Ethan will deal with all the wits. Then place your Surtur right in the middle. Again, as mentioned, um, the middle lane will be the best place to damage the boss. Then you can place your Medics, place one over there. Then whenever you have enough DP, you can place your second Medic. Feel free to bring Vanguards if you feel like. Now after the boss like does a little squeeze, it's a good sign that you can turn on certain skill. Don't worry about your single target medics. In the first phase, the boss um, cross area arts damage is not that painful. Alright, you can remove Surtur once she's done. Once the little lens start getting into this particular tile, feel free to put your Centurion. Don't put it too early because your medics are trying to heal themselves up since the uh, cross area arts damage is not over yet. I love this background music. It's my favorite song in the entire game. Alright, you can remove Papuka now. He's not needed anymore. Now you can place your Surtur back in. Now there's going to be some wits that goes on the top lane and the bottom lane. It's fine. Um, we're going to let the boss have some additional HP. Now remember I've mentioned that there's that physical damage skill where um, the boss does like a little spear downwards on the melee enemy uh, unit. Sorry. So what we're going to do is place a gravel down. She's going to be like a distraction. The boss does a little scream. Go ahead and turn on certain skill. So there you go, um, Gravel got taken out, but it's fine. Now, everybody is going to get destroyed on this map, alright? The boss is going to do this damage. It's much harder than phase 1, but it's okay that everybody gets killed, alright? There you go, just remove everybody from the map. Those that kept the life, get them out. If you want to speed up this, by the way, instead of only using a Surtur, you can consider maybe say using a Silver Ash, a Nur Outer, maybe a Chen Outer on the bottom left tile there, or even your Ling. You know, um, that way you can stop this particular waiting game. Um, just put all your boss killers in this one, um, just to handle it. But if not, if let's say you're using only one 6 star, so once certain redeployment is back, you can place Gravel, distract a bit, then place Surtur back in, and use Surtur skill. Alright. Now you can remove Surtur. Place a Medic right here, along with your Ethan, and then a Papuka again. Again, all these guys are weak to physical damage, which is why Papuka is great here. Now there is this birdie boy um, right over here, which is weak to arts damage. So Papuka is going to have a hard time to kill him. But don't worry, we've got a solution for that. Now feel free to turn on Papuka's skill first, just to increase the attack against this guy. Once Surtur redeployment time is done, you can remove Papuka and place Surtur here. And you can see that Surtur is doing a much better damage. Now you can remove Hibiscus, not needed anymore. Whichever medic that you place behind. Alright. Going good so far. Ethan is doing a wonderful job at taking out all the wits. Ethan doesn't need to bind, by the way. He's actually able to take them all out without binding. Now place a distraction. Remember to do that. And then feel free to turn on certain skill again. Now you can remove Ethan, not needed anymore. Now Surtur has Immortality, which is the reason why she's able to tolerate this attack. Now let her retreat on her own. And I need to pay attention to the purple bar, alright? 
once the purple bar hits near to the maximum, you need to do some stuff. Alright, this thing is giving the boss SP. So it's almost at the max. Place your medic, place your fast redeploy right over there. You can place another medic down to help. And place your popper car right behind. So if gravel goes down, um, popper car can get hurt. Alright. Once the boss is done with the laser beam attack, remove, remove everybody. Alright, just like that. The boss will take some time to load up his um, laser beam attack, so not all too bad. Surtur is almost done. Place gravel to distract the boss, and then place Surtur right behind. And then use Surtur skill, and then that should be more than enough to get rid of the boss. It'll be simple enough for you guys to follow. I believe if you have a lot of 6 stars, you'll have a much easier time to do this stage. So it shouldn't be all too bad for you guys. Alright, that's that for IW9. I hope that I've helped you guys out. If not, I shall see you guys in many more videos to come after I recover from COVID, that is. Because it feels horrible right now. Alright, see you guys. Bye-bye.